happening. Extra so sad. But you got it fixed after three days. <laughs> well, Bob Cafferty is supposed to come look at it, but I haven't heard. Okay, so if everybody could please join with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, we are going to immediately um, recess the public meeting to go into executive session. Um, because we are going to get a, we are getting a legal consult before we do any discussion. Um, so that's at six eleven. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Chris, and a second. Second. Thank you, Molly. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay, we will be back as quickly as we can. It's so. air conditioned. It's comfortable. <laughs> um, we'll have to wait for Chris. But we should wait for Chris before we reconvene. Oh, we have a plan. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I'm just picking. I got <laughs> Shannon and some other people. <laughs> I know. <sighs> Piana, you still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, just making sure that we didn't lose you in the hallway someplace. No, no, no. We're talking to Tiana. Tiana. <laughs> okay, so we are going to reconvene at 7.25 p.m. Okay. Um, be it resolved upon recommendation of the superintendent that the Board of Education of the Whitney Point Central School District approve policy 7131, admission of non-resident students for first reading. We have to have the motion before we can do any discussion. Um, may I have a motion? So moved. Thank you, Chris. And a second? Second. Thank you, Tom. Okay. So, um, One of the things that we have been considering is adjusting our non-resident um, student policy. Um, we have one that's up for first reading. I'm going to give you the gist of what the policy is. Or I missed the gist. No, no, I know. <laughs> But it was getting to the point where up here it would have been tough for me to like actually no, no. I, it's a hard enough time for me to read my handwriting as it is <laughs> in the dark it's never a good thing um we are in the process of changing our non-resident student policy um how this will go into effect is that all applications for non-resident um, students for the 24-25 school year have to be in by 8-15-24 um, to be considered for the for this school year and of course still the students have to um, they have to um, meet, the, meet, meet the, criteria. the criteria as it's already stated in our current policy okay um, However, this will be for one year and one year only. Yes. Our, our intention is to um, no longer accept non-resident students with the exception of students of employees. Um, we're finding ourselves like many school districts in the position where we're having difficulty meeting the needs of our resident students not enough teachers, not enough of the of qualified teachers in certain areas, um, and our resident students have to come first. Um, so it'll be for a one-year period only. Um, 
employees will still be able to bring their students here. But again, they have to meet the current criteria as well. Students in good standing and all of that. Um, all current employees as of 9-1-2024 will be allowed to send their students here with tuition waived after they retire. Anyone hired after 9-1-2024 will not be able to send their students here upon retirement. Um, Unless they meet the conditions within the contract, which is a junior year. Right, yeah. and, and it will remain in our policy that any student who has to move out during their junior year they will be allowed to continue to finish their education here at Whitney Point with tuition waived with the understanding that it really sucks when you have to move the last year, year and a half of your schooling. Um, and that's that has been a longstanding policy for us. Um, all employee non-resident student applications must be submitted for the next school year by May 15th um, or upon within 60 days of employment. So of course we hire through the summer. If you're hired during the summer, you have 60 days to apply to send your student here as, an, as a non-resident employee student. Anytime, yep. And again, everybody has to meet the criteria. So the biggest thing that will affect you is that as long as your student meets our criteria, you have your application in um, and is so, it, but it will, like I said, it will be for one year only. Um, so that will give you time to um, figure out whether you can move back into the district to continue here. You're, you're saying everything I was going to say. <laughs> we, we had an emergency to move out of the district, mm -hmm. finish up 12 days over there and then second grade, and then we're going we can get it back here. We can get back into the district. But th this will give you a year right. to do so. So you're not finding that you have to do it by September 1st. Right. Okay. And and that's for all the residents right, that are considering just, yeah. it. That yeah, yeah, not, not, not but I'm just I, I was speaking yep. to how it's going to affect him. Yeah, but any applications for non-resident employees that we receive by August 15th will be considered for the 24-25 um, school year with tuition paid, with unless they're an employee with with tuition paid unless they're an employee. Do we know what tuition is, or is that something we're going to have to find out? No, it's already, it was publicized in our last board meeting. Okay, um, and elementary is zero. zero. Okay. And and that's a rate that is set by the state, the state every year. What was it? Zero, and how much was it for? 2,440 something. Yeah. Something yeah, dollars. I think I was trying to get on Zoom when that was happening. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously because your child is elementary age still, it would be zero tuition, okay? And I'm sorry, so, and you did mention that uh, the employees will continue being specific, okay. Yeah. they rolled it, it, into it, the retired tuition, okay. Yep, just... and so, um, yeah, after September 1st, that's our cutoff date for, for being employed. The sun setting. For the sun setting of if you can send your student here upon your retirement. Right. Um, if you're hired after September 1st of this year, regardless of whether you have a student in school, when you retire, you will not be able to send your student here. I'm assuming with the exception of if you retire yeah. during yeah. their junior year. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. All these permutations and layers. <laughs> no, I meant, I meant just our regular what we were doing before for employees. That was just mentioned that that's going to yeah. continue yeah. to stay the same. Yeah. That is staying the same, yeah. except that we are setting the, the, the application, application deadline okay. yeah. um, of May 15th so that we are able to 
approve those in our June meeting and anybody who is hired after, right. yeah, they have 60 days to put their application in to bring their student here. And just a reminder that anybody who does not have an application into the district before August 15th of this year, they will not be considered under the non-resident acceptance to this for the 24 25 yeah yes. yeah but they they too will only be allowed to attend the for the 24 25 school year if and after, after that right. point we will not be accepting any right other non-resident students with the exception of employees right does that make sense just wanted to make sure that somebody out there, because <laughs> it, it was a lot for us to absorb. It was a lot, you know, of different layers. So I wanted to make sure that I got it all straight. Okay. Yep. We're in discussion right now. We knew. Yeah. Yeah. This is a weird form. Because <laughs> I'm not seeing public comments. I'm yeah. Like Molly, I'm yeah. Here. Well, um, okay. We're good. We're all good. Yep. Are there any other comments from the board before we vote on the first reading? I just want to say it has been a very, very hard decision for the board. We've all taken a ton of time, consulted our lawyer, then very tried to use our wisdom, even, uh, even when our hearts were trying to pull us in a place that is hard sometimes. So I just want the community to understand that we consider this as a very important responsibility. Yes. But first and foremost, we need to take care of our students. We need to take care of the students who reside within the district. Right. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Um, we don't have a comments from the public set in here. Um, however, if there's any, because we we did kind of include you in there, which we don't normally do, <laughs> but because it was you, I mean, I mean, just one because person you're here, yes, <laughs> you're, and, and you're in front of us, and you are public. But that being said, is there any other comment you'd like to make? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying for you guys are doing this because, I mean, long story short, Reese, so I call him Reese, names are Reese, but I call him Reese, uh, came to me in October, dropped on my doorstep, said here. In the Whitney Point and has progressed thousand percent. He is from August to June was I don't know who he is now because he progressed so much reading, writing, you know, manners. He has those off days of being a kid up we all do even as adults. But that's why I wanted to keep him here. But we had to move out of the district, obviously. But I'm thankful you guys are doing this because it's it, it's gonna give me that full year to actually see what I can do with him in third grade and in a special needs classroom. So mm -hmm. I, I thank you guys for doing this and, and taking the time and, and really thinking it over. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other business this evening? Okay. Then we are going to adjourn the public meeting at, is that Tiana? Yeah, thank you. Okay. So at 6.36, may I have a motion? Someone at 7.36. I'm yeah, sorry. No, you're, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, so Chris and I'll assume Molly's seconding. Yeah, yes, I second. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstain? Thank you very much for attending tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good night, Tiana. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you for sleeping so late, Kevin. <laughs> and again, tell Frank we said. I don't know. Her. Betty tried, I guess. No, I know. Sorry for all the technology. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Chris. For the first that time that today, I'm actually cold. Yeah, I know. I'm getting my. I, I've been sweating so. all day. I'm saying. It's cold Huh? Really well, no, it's funny because right behind my desk, there's 
an AC vent. And normally, like when nobody's going in and out of the door, I start getting so cold. Going yeah. As yeah. As the door. Door. Yeah. yeah. After we do second policy and we vote, then we can bring the policy back forward to clarify the level of employees that get the benefits. Well, oh, the well no, we need to know by second reading. Yeah. Second yeah. reading. If we're going to enact this, which mm -hmm. we are going to, we have to have second reading and have that set. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to yeah. be part of the policy. Specified. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know if we yeah. would leave it as is now. But then bring the policy back up during the school year and say to make our formal changes. Make our formal changes. I didn't know which way we wanted to go. If, if we're going to enact the policy, the policy has to be set. The exactly. only thing is, you could say employee, not clarify it, and then at another time amend it to say full time if you wanted to. Okay. I mean, we don't really we don't have any part time employees that right are affecting here. anything. Not right now. I still feel it should.